What is up everyone? It's your boy Fry. Today we're going to be talking about rooting audio, right? I'm going to demystify all of the, um, you know, the kind of uh, scary thoughts that you might have when rooting audio. You know, over time I've gotten so many questions on, you know, oh, how are you rooting all of this audio around and why do we do it? And really the key thing is that we want to save CPU, right? Um, I think it's really important to save CPU as well as it's it's it makes sense in audio to send everything that is pretty much the same to the same kind of processing, right? So let's just say um, we have, don't worry about the mix right now, we'll kind of talk about the session we have now, no, but let's just say we have four different artists on one song, right? Um, what we're going to do is, what I would do is, I would EQ each artist differently, right? So do EQ adjustments, make sure that each of their voices blend nicely into the song, right? Then what I'll do is I will send all of their vocals into one channel, right? Just to kind of finalize it. Um, and that's what we call uh, bussing, right? So we're bussing the audio, we're rooting it, we're creating a um, aux channel. There are many different names, but let's just go with uh, bus, right? Why would we want to bus? As I said, it's to save CPU. So imagine I wanted to add, uh, let's just say, this compressor onto every one of their vocals. I might actually do that, right? Because, you know, one person might be singing a bit louder than the other, might want to compress them a bit differently. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to, if I want to treat all the vocals the same, right? So let's just say I have a final uh, compressor that I want to use. I'm going to add that onto a aux channel and then send all of that audio into one aux channel. Now, the, the, a perfect example in this is we've got something here called the vocal bus. And, you know, if you do ever purchase a template, you can see that uh, you've got a crown here, right? And that basically means that every single vocal in the session, right? So all of this audio over here is going to be affected by this processing right here. So as you can see, we've got um, background vocals, right? That end up at this, uh, either of these two channels, right? So all of our vocals go to these two channels and then they go to this channel. So what we do is we're doing a tiny bit of processing on everything just to give it that final bit of polish. You know, it makes it just makes sure that everything is sounding pretty much the same before going to the master channel. Uh, think of it as mastering your vocals before actually sending it to the master. That way, you know, you can see here, if I do decide to mute the vocal bus, all we'll hear is the reverbs in that. Yeah, so, you know, softly in the background, we hear the reverb. So that's a different type of send, right? I'll, I'll kind of elaborate on this a bit more, but just before I forget, um, we don't have to send, you know, I mean, in this session I am, but generally I would just send all of main vocal tracks to reverb, um, you know, all of the, you know, the background vocals, you know, send a bit of reverb. And that just helps me to keep a constant, you know, kind of level. That means that, you know, think about it like this. If you have, um, let's just keep it as simple as possible, right? So let me break down what's in this session. So we have here two main vocals, right? Which are our verse and our hook. Those are really the same thing, right? Because they are main vocals, right? Maybe the hook, we might want to, you know, add a bit of phase on it just to give it a bit of life when it comes in, right? And then the verse we might wanna keep dry, but at the end of the day, I wanna equalize and compress them the same, right? That makes sense now. So everything in blue, don't mind that the tune channel for now, but you know, we wanna process this and this the same. So what we do is we send the hook to the main vocal channel, which I always call mono, um, and we send the verse to the mono channel as well so that we can equalize them, compress them exactly the same. So that's one benefit of bussing. You know, it, it just cuts out the fact that imagine I had to add this to here and to there. I would have um, a lot less CPU to spare, right? So it makes sense for that. And as you can see here, we've got verse uh, background vocals. We've got our chorus background vocals. Regardless, we want to send them to the side channel, which is really just a background uh, vocal channel. So I'm able to do EQing on them. I'm able to add some compression on them. So they'll always kind of sound the same. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then, right, we have parallel processing, which is a different type of bussing. Um, parallel processing really just means that I can send, for example, you see here a verse and a hook. I don't want to add a chorus effect onto my main vocal channel. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather have it blend in with the original signal. So as you can see, if I turn it up, let's just mute this for now. Hunted on the dash, yeah, we racing now. Right? Oh my gosh. Came up for nothing, but we signed now. 
You see, that way I can avoid phase problems. Because imagine I just threw that whole chorus and all this EQ and all that kind of stuff onto one channel. It wouldn't sound very good, right? It would start to sound like way too just kind of out there. We want to keep that original main vocal as it is, but add on reverbs and delays. So that's parallel processing. And then we've got busing, right? Which is to save CPU, to make sure that, you know, we've got a limiter on at the final, uh, let's just say in the final chain, just to make sure that, you know, the final level stays consistent, etc. There are many benefits to this, but I would definitely recommend going and, um, you know, reading a page out of an audio book or something. Just learn about audio routing, audio busing. Um, and yeah, I'll just try and speak a bit more about it. I mean, I might as well. It's really hot where I am right now. So apologies for not posting a video yesterday, but yeah. Um, what else could we really speak about with rooting? Um, another thing is, you know, obviously here I've got two different vocal takes, background vocals, right? So we can actually just go and um, solo those. Listen. Right? So that's the left. Now, what I want to do is I want to process those differently than everything else, right? So what I did here was I went, hey, left and right channel, why don't we root it to a little, you know, hook background bus, right? And really all we're doing on that channel is adding a bit of reverb. See, that way I don't have to add a reverb onto anywhere here. I don't want the whole song or all the vocals to have reverb on them. I just want that particular thing to have reverb on them. But at the same time, right, when you're in a room, you want a consistent kind of sound. So instead of me adding two independent reverbs, I'm adding one so that, it, you know, when I play both together, you can hear both come in here. See, it sounds like one room. It almost sounds like a choir. You know what I mean? Generally with the choir, you would, let's just say, have four mics on a choir. And then you would send all of those microphone channels to a choir channel, let's just say. And then you could start doing EQ adjustments. But before we, we're doing all these kind of finalizing EQ adjustments, we're doing independent um, adjustments, right? So let's just say that this is a left microphone, this is a right microphone, right? Let's just say that the left side was singing louder than the right side, right? It wouldn't make sense for me to just drag down the channel that they're being sent to, right? So what we could do is we could just turn this one down a bit. Right? So now we, we, we're able to mix and match and do what we do before we start doing final tonal adjustments, which are EQ, you know, um, compression and whatever. So yeah, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, it is your boy Fry. Um, oh yeah, this, let me just not end this right here. <clears throat> and I have talked about this before, um, I think in my how to use the recording sampler video, but the reason here that you've got this mic input channel, this is just another example of, of rooting audio, right? Um, is we rooting to a hook channel, right? Now this hook channel has auto-tune on it. I also get the question, do I record with auto-tune? Yes, you can record with auto-tune, right? Um, but the benefit in FL Studio, um, you know, being able to root your audio around is that, you know, if I added the auto-tune channel to this microphone channel, right? So when I enable it and I record it, I would actually have the auto-tune embedded into the, the WAV file, right? So the benefit of this is that, as shall we racing now? You're hearing auto-tune, but if I turn the auto-tune off, as shall we racing now? There's no auto-tune, you know what I mean? I haven't recorded the, the auto-tune into the waveform. That's something that I, I try and, and make people avoid when recording an FL because it can easily happen. Um, some people think that they're supposed to do it that way, but you're not because <clears throat> you're not able to go backwards in time. And that's the biggest problem. So yeah, that's another example. So for final sake, I will show you the final routing chain. If you've lasted this long, then you're obviously interested in routing audio. But we go from mic input, which is one. Let's just call it step one. And we're going to be working from right to left. <coughs> My bad. So this is step one, right? We go from microphone input to the hook channel, right? So this this is just, it just has a bit of auto-tune on it. From the hook channel, right, as you follow these little um, rooting thingies, the wires or whatever, we then go into our main vocal channel, which is called mono in this case. So, so far we've gone from mic to hook to mono channel. After the mono channel, because now we want to do a bit of EQing and stuff, but we don't EQ it the same as the background vocals. You know, obviously, as you can see, there's a lot more going on in the main vocal because it's the most important element in the mix, right, the vocal. Um, after that, you know, we've EQ'd our, our background vocals. We're happy with what they sound like. Now we want to do some final adjustments to the whole thing because at the end of the day, you need to remember that the listeners don't care about how many channels you had in your song. They're only going to hear what's coming out of the master output, right? So we want to do a bit of final EQ tweaks. We do that and then we send everything, including the beat, 
you know, if you had a normal session which had like 60 tracks in it, we're sending all of that to the master channel, right? Um, either we're doing the mastering ourselves, whatever, it's up to us. What What is this? This is pretty cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, we've got all this going on um, and then everything is being sent to this. So, right, this is our final bus, let's call it. You know what I mean? Whatever's coming out of here. Alrighty, apologies there. I just ended the video by hitting the spacebar button. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. Uh, it is Boy Fry. Like and subscribe. Drop a like, obviously, if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you have not. Um, shout out to all the subscribers out there. I haven't said that in a while. Um, you know, I appreciate it a lot. And it is really hot out here, so I would appreciate all the support. Post your video ideas. It's just really hard uh, to balance, you know, mixing and all of that. And still do the tutorials. Um, it's just a crazy week. Generally, around the $15 mix has come through. So it has been a long week. Um, you know, I've had a bit of audio interface issues. I am using my secondary interface, which uh, the sound is average. Um, you know, once you get high quality audio, you don't want to go step back in time. So anyway, you know, it's working right now. So we are thankful for all that. Shout out to you. And I will see you next time. It is a boy fry. Peace.